So in our engine oil leak video, we went through some checks on the CRV and we decided that the engine oil leak was most prominently coming from the oil pressure switch. And so I've got a replacement switch here and we're gonna go through replacing that. First, let's look at this oil pressure switch. This is a pretty standard oil pressure switch. Uh, this one happens to get used on a lot of different vehicles, um, crosses to a lot of different ones, and it's an aftermarket piece. This particular one is a Beck Arnley, but it's got an eighth inch NPT fitting on this side, and so that's a pipe thread fitting. Um, that means that it has a taper to it, and so torque is important with this. It's easy to over tighten these to a point where maybe I break it. The other thing that we want to look at is the electrical connector. And then you can see that there are two parts to this switch. There's the metal body that goes and threads into the engine block, the plastic housing that holds the electrical switch. And inside there, through this hole in the center, there is a diaphragm. That diaphragm helps to keep the oil on the engine side and keep the switch side dry. That's the part that we think has broken, ruptured, or torn on the switch that's in the car. And so that's allowing oil to enter through this hole and ultimately come out through this side, as was evident in the last video. So we're gonna go at replacing this. So when I work with an oil pressure switch like this, I wanna be really cautious about the type of socket I put on here. Some of these will not have a hex cut, but will have somewhat of a proprietary shape around this, and those might require a special socket. So it's important to pay attention to that. This one has just got a basic hex, and so I could use a regular socket to fit over this. What I wanna be cautious about, once I find the correct size, I just keep trying until I find it. Looks like it's passed to 24. So here it looks like a 26 millimeter fits my hex shape like that. The thing that I want to be cautious about is do I have the proper clearance within the inside of the socket right there so that I don't damage the electrical portion or put undue stress on this plastic portion. That could create a leak just like we're trying to fix. After I've got the original oil pressure switch out, it's a great best practice to compare my parts, make sure that I've got the right part before I go at reinstalling it. So I initially want to check some of the most important features, one being the electrical connector. I wanna make sure that this is going to plug back in to the factory connector. The other one being the diameter and pitch of the threads on these. And so you can see the diameter is about the same I could lay my threads in like that and see that they match. The other thing that I noticed in taking these out is that the diameter of the hex or fastener on this one on the aftermarket is much larger than the stock one, but that shouldn't make any difference. We've got an electrical connection that's the same and we've got some thread pitches that are the same. We should be good to go. Because this oil pressure switch uses pipe thread, I'm gonna have to use some Teflon tape like this in order to help seal the threads. With the threads all wrapped up, we can go reinstall it on the car. I always want to get these started by hand, make sure they thread in smoothly, and then we'll look at what the torque value is. I've got my service information pulled up. I'm going to go down and find oil pressure switch or sender. Look for the one that's got some information behind it. They should give me locations. I want a specification. Here they show where it's at, just next to the oil filter. 13 foot-pounds is what we want. With everything in there and torqued down, I'm gonna go ahead and plug the electrical connector back in. One of the checks then that I'm gonna to want to do after I install it is first just get a key on, make sure that I've got my treble light here and that it proves out. That light will only light up if I've got a good ground connection through that switch. When that switch is unplugged, I will not have a light on the dash. That's the replacement process of the switch. We've got it installed, we've got it hooked up. And so now I'd wanna run the car, make sure that I'm free of any kind of leaks. And then I need to wash the engine, let it run for a while and recheck and make sure that that was indeed our engine oil leak. That follow-up check after a clean is really important to make sure that I verify the repair. 
The other thing we want to cover in this process is what would I do if I wanted to troubleshoot an issue with a basic light warning light in a dash like that oil pressure switch. So that system's makeup, I've got an oil pressure switch, I've got some wiring, I've got my dash and cluster, and I've got that light bulb within the dash. That light bulb comes on whenever it sees a ground path through the oil pressure switch. And so on this car, that's a really basic circuit because there's only one wire going to the oil pressure switch and it utilizes the engine block as a ground path. And so in order for that light to come on during the bulb check, just with the initial key on, I've got to have a good ground path through that switch. So that's one easy verification to look at. Does my cluster have power in the proper place to turn on that light? And then does it have a ground path through the switch? If I don't get that just in my key on check, I know that I've got some things to look at in terms of the power availability and the ground path in the switch. The other type of test I might do is a functional test. Maybe I'm worried that the oil pressure light stays on. How do I know that that is indeed a low oil pressure situation in the engine versus just an issue with the switch? One thing I can check is unplugging the switch and making sure the light goes out. I want to make sure that the signal wire going from the dash to the pressure switch doesn't have some kind of short or other issue with it that's causing that light to stay on. The other thing I'm going to want to do is ultimately remove the oil pressure switch and check real oil pressure with the gauge. Any low oil pressure concern I've got to look at cautiously because I don't want to run the engine any more than I have to if it indeed has low oil pressure. Those are some of the basic checks and replacement process for an oil pressure switch. In our case, we're hoping it fixes our engine oil leak. I'm going to go on, clean this up, and recheck it. Thanks for watching.